did I just watch? Seriously, I mean, for years now, NBC and MSNBC have been pretty open about pushing for socialism. But I, I don't want to get into the, you know, I'm on every night. I let the Democrats figure this out. I, <laughs> I have my own views of the word socialist, and I'll be glad to tell them, share them with you in private. And they go back to uh, the early 1950s. I have an attitude about them. I remember the Cold War. I have an attitude towards Castro. Well, I believe if Castro and the, and, the, and the Reds had won the Cold War, there would have been executions in Central Park, and I might have been one of the ones getting executed. I don't know who Bernie, Bernie supports over these years. I don't know what he means by social. Clearly in the Denmark Is category, he? yeah. Are you sure? How do you know? Did he tell you that? They openly promote far left Democrats who are essentially socialists without being open about it. And we know that these Democrats operate as stealth socialists because over at CNN not long ago, they were openly saying that Democrats should choose another word to describe socialism because the word itself is so tainted. That's right, CNN wanted to Democrats to deceive the voters about what they actually are. Chris Matthews himself, for as long as I've been watching him, has been a supporter of socialist Democrats. He famously said that Barack Obama sent a thrill up his leg. The feeling most people get when they hear a Barack Obama speech, my, I felt this thrill right. going up my leg. I well, mean, right. I don't have that too often. Steady. <laughs> no, seriously. Barack Obama is definitely a socialist. In fact, I'd go even further and say that he's probably a communist. Does Chris Matthews not know anything about this? Obama was raised and mentored by communists. Now, I'm not just throwing these labels at him because I don't like him. He's actually said and done things that earn that label. In 2016, Obama went on a town hall speaking tour that went to Cuba and Argentina, where he told students, quote, there's no difference between capitalism and communism and that they should, quote, choose what works. In fact, just yesterday during the Oscars, Julia Reichart, who is a movie producer that's financed by the Obamas, won an award and then gave a shout out to Karl Marx and communism saying quote working people have it harder and harder these days and we believe that things will get better when workers of the world unite in case you didn't know that's a quote lifted straight from the communist manifesto just a quick reminder and we'll get right back to the video but if you want to support this channel please consider subscribing to me on patreon subscribestar or paypal for just one dollar a month you'll be really helping this channel and you'll get early access to all my videos as well as exclusive content back to chris matthews is he unaware of all of this? Is he unaware of his own co-host support for socialism and communism? When Fidel Castro died, several people on both NBC and MSNBC gave glowing obituaries to the brutal communist dictator. Because while Fidel Castro was considered, even to this, to this day, the George Washington of his country, among those who remain in Cuba, by then a declared socialist, he dramatically improved health care and literacy. He will be revered as someone who brought education and social services and medical care to all of his people. I'm just blown away and baffled by this guy who's supposedly so fearful of socialism taking hold in America, but yet has played such a big role in normalizing it by promoting and defending Democrats who are pushing for it. Perhaps Matthews is starting to wake up. He did once criticize Antifa and question how they could be called anti-fascists when they operate as fascists. What are they really? I know their name is anti-fascist. Do they only go after fascists or do they go after anybody, say, in the global economic community they don't like? How wide a sweep do they say fascist? Do they mean Mussolini people? Oh. Who do they mean? No, I believe they're, Anybody they don't they're like? I Which we all know is an extremely rare occurrence over at MSNBC. I mean, that's what he says and that's what his agenda calls for, right? Yeah, yeah, He's not uh, calling yeah. for well, any... Let's I mean, see, let's see. Let's figure that one out. A, well, we haven't seen a, a campaign yet where video of him praising the other version right. of Castro and then, has been used. Well, but that's it a, will be used. That's a question. Hold and then he became a communist and started shooting okay. every one of his enemies. Okay, hold, so, hold, hold, those, thoughts on the Cuban, hold those thoughts on the Cuban revolution. First of all, what the hell is up with Chris Hayes? The dude looks like a serial killer or the cannibal from Sin City. I could definitely see him in the position of left-wing Orwellian information minister. He's playing the part beautifully when he and Joy Reid claims that Sanders has never praised the Fidel Castro version of socialism. They're either totally uninformed, which wouldn't surprise me, or they're just flat out lying. Sanders actually has a long documented history of praising both socialism and communism and the dictators who enforce it. Thanks to all the hard work done by Reagan Battalion, who you can find right here, 
We have all of this on record. And by the way, you should all head on over there when you're done with this video and subscribe to their channel. They deserve way more than a couple hundred subs. In one example, Sanders is on video saying, quote, but I remember for some reason being very excited when Fidel Castro made the revolution in Cuba. And Kennedy was saying that Nixon was too soft on communism in Cuba. I actually got up from the room and almost puked. In another lecture, he blamed the U.S. for the Cold War and actually praised communist USSR, saying that he was oppressed by their effective transportation system. But I remember, for some reason or other, being very excited when, when Fidel Castro made the revolution in Cuba. I was a kid and I remember reading that. And it was just seemed right and appropriate that poor people were rising up against rather ugly rich people. Kennedy was saying that Nixon was too soft on communism. I'm sufficiently unemotional not to be sick, but I actually got up in the room and almost left the puke. Bruh. He left no mysteries about his support for communism in the 80s, saying that to solve inequality, there should be, quote, public ownership of significant parts of the economy. What the hell are these people at MSNBC even paid for? They're clearly not interested in facts or reporting on these candidates accurately. I'm supposed to believe that they don't know anything about these videos? Why aren't they being broadcast on all the news networks? Well, we all know the answer to that question. Perhaps if Sanders is close to winning the nomination, Nomination, they'll just open the floodgates, but I have my doubts. The younger people are in the driver's seat with these left-wing media organizations, and they're the ones calling for this ideological shift. Guys like Matthews, old school liberals, are on the chopping block in more ways than one. He's right to be worried about executions in Central Park because that's exactly what Bernie's staffers have called for. What's needed right now is for Americans to stand up for capitalism. Capitalism isn't perfect by any means, but it's brought us this far in a really short amount of time. Hopefully we can convince enough Americans that going down the socialist road will end America as we know it, and not in a good way. That's all I have for today. Please hit that like button, share this video with your friends and family, and subscribe. You might as well hit that notification bell while you're at it so you're alerted to all my new content. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.